chair. And uh, thank you all for being here. Can you see me here? Yes, we see you. Okay. You got we it. hear you as well. Great. Great. Thank you for uh, having this hearing and thank you uh, all, th all three of you for being here. As you can imagine, this is very much top of mind of many, many people uh, in certainly in the state of West Virginia, but all across the country. And the logistics of this, I think, are exceedingly important. So, um, Dr. Levine, I'd like to ask you the first question. Uh, in your neighboring state of Pennsylvania, you might have noticed our state of West Virginia, we've really relied on our National Guard to do to be supply chain, to do PPE for our schools. They've done a lot of testing uh, and have really filled in an enormous gap for us uh, as a state and have really been the frontline workers and the governors relied quite a bit on them. Is there any plan in Pennsylvania to use that, that supply chain or that uh, knowledge that the guard has accumulated over the last eight to nine months to be a part of this distribution uh, once you secure the vaccine? So I know that other states uh, do plan to utilize the National Guard for that mission. Uh, right now in Pennsylvania, we, we do not. Um, our National Guard uh, members who've also been integral to our response uh, are actually working primarily in nursing homes and long-term care living facilities. Um, and so we have used uh, medical personnel um, extensively as strike teams to go into uh, challenged nursing homes uh, to provide direct care to patients and to who have specific uh, in nursing homes that have particular staffing issues because their staff either have COVID-19 or they're in um, they're in quarantine. In addition, we if we have to um, open alternative care sites. Uh, for hospitalized patients, then we would use National Guard for that purpose. So we have not used uh, the Guard in our planning. Okay. Um, second question is uh, on the uh, on the dosages. Let me ask a simple question. If you get the Pfizer first dose, is the amount of the first dose the same as the amount of the Pfizer second dose? In other words, are they like? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, on tracking that, I think this is going to be a potential problem, uh, particularly in rural America. How do you track who's gotten the first one? How do you retrack if you don't have connectivity for certain areas? Um, who has the responsibility of that? Do you, as the chief medical officer, does uh, does Pfizer have that responsibility? Uh, where does that responsibility lie? Where's the, uh, the, the recheck going to be on this? Because my understanding is that second dose is very critical. So you are correct. The second dose is critical to produce the appropriate immune response uh, so that the individual will have a really good chance of being immune to, to COVID-19. Uh, it is primarily our responsibility uh, to, to track um, when the first dose is given and the second dose is given. Uh, we will be, of course, working with the healthcare providers themselves who have to input into our system that that's, those doses are given. And both the healthcare providers and the Department of Health have um, call, uh, recall um, uh, mechanisms to contact patients who don't come for their second dose. So do you have the systems already uh, uh, available to you that would be uh, perfect for inputting this data so that you can follow up quickly and all that? Is that system I'm going to assume exists now? It's not something you have to build? Uh, no, the system exists now. It, we did have to update our, our current immunization system and make it much more robust with redundancies uh, for this mission, which is much bigger than other immunization campaigns we've had, but we have those systems present now. Okay, um, Mr. Smith and Mr. Wheeler, um, let me ask you this question in terms of last house. Uh, I, I, my understanding that is in, in some cases, uh, the last house delivery from UPS or from FedEx may be from the um, uh, US Postal Service. Is, is that a correct assumption? Is, am I right there? Well, you wanna take it? Well, we, we both uh, have services where we utilize the United States Postal Service for final mile delivery, primarily of lightweight, low value e-commerce uh, items. Would the, okay, would the vaccine fall into this or would Absolutely that be something not. that you... Absolutely not. Vaccine will be delivered by FedEx Express, by a FedEx Express courier uh, to these administration sites. And is that the same with UPS? Exactly the same with UPS. We are 100% UPS uh, network. And as you know, okay, we, we all the employees are UPS employees. Good. Well, I would imagine, I mean, you know, uh, utilization of that, however many, the fewer hands that between the, the vaccine and the person who actually receives it, obviously uh, eliminates any kind of uh, room for error there. So I, I'm, I'm pleased agree to agree 100%. That. Good. And then um, I was interested to hear too that uh, there have been some relaxations of certain regulations, uh, times of service. 
I heard expired licenses of pilots or extension of pilot licenses and other things. Uh, I understand that's going to be very helpful to both of you to make sure that you got full capacity to be able to move forward. Do you have anything to add on that uh, aspect where you might need some other flexibilities? Uh, we, we're actively testing all of our pilots on a regular basis uh, to make sure that we, we can rotate the pilots efficiently. We have 3,000 pilots in the U.S. and we are uh, testing them all. Yeah, we're doing the same. Our, our pilots are, are being tested before they fly on a mission, particularly internationally, um, so same. Okay, but then let's say, let's go to your uh, trucks. Same thing? I mean, there, there are hours of service uh, uh, restrictions on those too. Do those play, uh, come into play for you or not? Uh, we, we think we can, we can manage those and uh, we, we don't have any additional asks in that regard here. I'll just add, we said before that uh, we're giving priority to all the vaccine shipments. So as soon as they arrive in the, in the destination uh, location, our sort facilities or our hub facilities, the drivers will know exactly that uh, they're, they're moving vaccines. So it's a priority for them. Uh, they'll put those packages on their, on, on their trucks first and, and the others will, will, will follow. Okay, final question for both of you. Obviously getting a vaccine, you, you, I, sh I saw you with a little vial of the fake uh, Pfizer vaccine. Um, Obviously, you need swabs, you need uh, injection devices. Uh, are you in contact with those manufacturers too to make sure that are you a part of that whole stream of uh, logistics that are going to be important to delivering this vaccine, Mr. Mr. Wheeler? Yeah, UPS uh, moves everything. So we are moving uh, ancillary supplies to our customers. We're moving uh, glass vials. But I mean, is that something that you're making special considerations for as you are for the for the vaccine itself? Of course. I we're we're, okay. we're planning for Mr. everything. Smith? Yes, same. We're planning for everything. Anything that we're asked to move from a distributor like McKesson, uh, or from directly from a manufacturer like Pfizer, in terms of, of just shipping vaccine, or whether we're shipping vaccine and kitting, we are uh, same as UPS. We're we're prepared for it and, and ready, and planning that with them. Okay. Thank you.